Hi, welcome to the walkthrough video for Worship Essentials Plus 2.1, an exciting update to our flagship Worship Essentials Plus product. Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 lets you play creatively with all the patches and features you need as a modern worship keyboardist. I'm Aaron, and I'm going to show you all about it. Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 was designed to have a premium sound and does require a few third-party plugins to sound the way it's intended. You'll need to have a Mac with MainStage 3, and you'll need to own Spectrasonic's Omnisphere 2, Valhalla Shimmer, the Giant, and Scarby Mark 1 with Contact or Contact Player from Native Instruments. After downloading the file included with your order, double-click the Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 installer. Then, double-click the Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 install package and follow the installer through the wizard. This will move all the related files and dependencies into place. And here you can see where it's moving everything. If you need or prefer to do this manually, double-click the Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 manual installer and then move all the dependencies into their respective locations. I'll show you a few things here. Included with Worship Essentials is the primary main stage concert, but it does also include a Logic session in case you're producing in Logic and would prefer to have access to these sounds in Logic. In the Extras folder, there are a few goodies as well. We have a Korg Nano Control 2 configuration file that loads the defaults needed for Worship Essentials. And we also have some wallpapers, so you can spice up your rig with some Worship Essentials artwork. Once Worship Essentials is installed, navigate to your Music folder, then to Main Stage, and double-click on the Worship Essentials Plus 2.1 concert. I'll open that now. Let me give you an overview of the Worship Essentials Plus interface. The layout of Worship Essentials Plus very closely mimics the layout of the Korg Nano Control 2 because all the on-screen controls are pre-mapped to buttons, knobs, or faders on the Korg Nano Control 2. Across the top, we have our global effects like reverb, shimmer, delay, and compression. In the center, we have our patch browser that lets you navigate up or down patches inside the Worship Essentials Plus concert. These are pre-mapped to the next and previous track buttons on the Korg Nano Control 2. The main area of the interface is comprised of our six primary layers that correspond with faders 1 through 6 on the Korg Nano Control 2. As we move through different patches in the Worship Essentials Plus set, we'll have different sounds available to us on each of these six faders. On the left, we have our drone pad volume that corresponds with fader number 7 on the Korg Nano Control 2. And then on the right, we have our master volume, which is fader number 8. In the very lower left corner, we have a panic button to clear any MIDI notes that may get stuck. Panic is mapped to the far lower left button on the MIDI controller as well. In the lower right hand corner, we have a tap tempo button for tapping in any tempo. Because all of the effects and delays within the concert are tempo locked and will adjust themselves to any tempo you tap in. The tempo button is mapped to the record button on the Korg Nano Control 2. Now below the main area, we have our Drone Tools section. Drone Tools is an ambient pad generator that triggers an endlessly sustaining pad that you can play on top of. We'll get into that in just a moment. But before you're ready to play, we need to make sure that your MIDI controller is set up to work with Worship Essentials Plus. Click the Layout tab in Main Stage and then select the primary keyboard instance at the bottom of the screen. Then click Assign in the inspector on the left and play any note on your MIDI controller. This will tell MainStage to respond to your primary keyboard controller. When you're done, click Assign to switch out of MIDI mapping mode. If you have a secondary controller, you can use that to control the Drone Tools pad. If that's the case, select the smaller keyboard instance, click Assign, and then play a note on your secondary controller and you can use that to control drone tools instead. Now switch back to edit mode and you're ready to play.
For each sound inside each patch, the three buttons to the left of the fader modify different aspects of that sound. For instance, on this particular patch, layer number one is our piano sound. The first button engages an octave, so you can play an octave lead with just one note. The second button engages a slight high-end EQ boost, so it cuts through a little better. And the third button engages a velocity limiter to keep the velocities in the super soft, delicate range. The concept is the same across the rest of the sounds in all of the patches, but the aspects that each button controls may differ from patch to patch. A new feature for version 2.1 is our new patch designer feature that lets you easily create custom layered patches and put any sound in the Worship Essentials library on any layer. In the patch list on the left hand side, click the add a new patch button to create a new empty patch. Then browse down to your patch library, user patches, instrument, Worship Essentials plus 2.1, and then take note of the Patch Designer layer folders. I'm going to select layer 1 and you can browse all of the sounds in the Worship Essentials Plus library that are pre-mapped for layer 1. In this case, I'm going to select Ambient Piano. Then I'll create a new patch again and this time I'll browse out to layer 2. Now I'll create a third patch and load something for layer 3. Now in the patch list on the left hand side, I'm going to hold down Command or Shift and select all three of those patches I just created. Then right click, choose New Patch from Selected Patches or at the Actions list at the top, choose New Patch from Selected Patches. This will create a new custom patch and merge together all of the instruments that were a part of the layers that you loaded. Double click the new patch name to rename it, and you're ready to go. Here's all the sounds we just loaded up. The patch designer layers are great because you can create any custom patch that you want with any sound in each layer. But we realize you may not want all of these patches loaded all of the time. In fact, for performance reasons, it might be better to remove the patches you're not going to use to keep your main stage concert trimmed down and more efficient. So I'm going to remove all of the patches here for just a moment. In fact, I'll delete everything except our default patch. Even if you've deleted everything, you can still use the patch designer to build custom patches. I need to mention that layer 5 is the only layer that contains the Worship Essentials string patch because the strings patch is a custom combination of layers 5 and 6. So if you're looking to load up Worship Essentials strings, make sure to put that on layer 5. In addition to the patch designer layers, We've also included all the original patches that were included with Worship Essentials Plus. So browse out to the patch library, user patches, instrument, Worship Essentials Plus 2.1, and then browse into the layered patches folder. This folder contains all the original layered patches that came with Worship Essentials Plus. You can load any of these back in at any moment. Here's a look at some of the new features with drone tools. As I mentioned before, you can set up a secondary keyboard to trigger the drone pads, or you can click the notes on screen. To stop playback, press the play button on the Korg Nano Control 2, or toggle the on off button on screen. These first two knobs are for octave and intervals, and they only apply before you trigger a note. The octave controls which octave the pads sustains in, 
and the interval controls the thickness of the chord, usually just the root or root and open fifth. So if I pull this all the way down and trigger another pad, you'll hear it's just the fifth. If I bring the interval up and re-trigger, you'll hear it's the root and the open fifth. As I continue to bring the intervals up, you'll hear it adding notes to the chord. And then here we are back at the default where it sounds nice and thick. As I bring the octave up and re-trigger, you'll hear the chord shift up an octave. But I'll bring it back down to the default here. The cutoff is a low pass filter that rolls off the high end so you can really dial in the tone of the drone pad. And layer two is an additional shimmer layer that you can bring in to really shape the overall texture of the sound. In fact, you can really hear the difference when I pull it down and out. While the drone pad is playing, you can enable motion one or motion two by clicking the buttons on screen or pressing the marker buttons on the Korg Nano Control 2. Motion 1 triggers an LFO that gradually opens up a filter, and if you listen really carefully, you'll hear the sound expanding. Motion 2 activates another LFO, but this one creates a pulsing effect. Or bring both of them in. Combine the motion and the second layer with the cutoff filter, and you can create a pad that fits just about under anything. I know you'll love playing with Worship Essentials Plus, and we'd love to hear from you about it. So be sure to find us on social media and share with us how and where you're using Worship Essentials Plus. You can find this product and more and answers to any questions you might have at our website, www.thatworshipsound.com.